Good afternoon. I am Malenz, and I come from the richest country in the world. It is located in the richest continent in the world, in the west of the richest continent. My country is called Sierra Leone. On the surface, we are blessed with infinite beauty and abundance of flora and fauna. producing the most exquisite harvest of coffee, cocoa, fruits, vegetables, and caoutchouc. You name it, we've got it. We also have diverse wildlife and ma vast marine resources. And waterfalls and rivers. On a deeper level, we are blessed with the real treasures the kings and queens of this world desire. This was the largest alluvial diamond ever found. It weighs almost a thousand carats, 969 to be precise. This beauty was found by an old lady in her backyard about two years ago, 125 carats. Some people mine gold in their backyards. That's quite common. Besides gold and diamonds, we have about 20 precious minerals that have been discovered as of today. We recently started extracting huge petroleum reserves that have been discovered. We have platinum, ilminite to make titanium, rutile to coat jets, iron ore, the largest iron ore deposits in Africa, the third largest in the world. Tantalite, also known as coltan, used in your mobile phones and computers. Bauxite for aluminium production. Zinc, chrome ore, copper, coal, phosphates, potassium, salt, lead, granite, asbestos. Nickel, zircon. Furthermore, we have exquisite timber like mahogany, antique. And we have the most beautiful stems in the world. <laughs> of course, the West needs Africa's resources most desperately to power airplanes, cell phones, computers, and engines. And the golden diamonds, of course, a status symbol to determine their powers by decor and to give value to their currencies. One thing that keeps me puzzled, despite having studied finance and economics at the world's best universities, the following question remains unanswered. Why is it that 5,000 units of our currency is worth one unit of your currency, where we are the ones with the actual gold reserves? It's quite evident that the aid is in fact not coming from the West to Africa, but from Africa to the Western world. The Western world depends on Africa in every possible way, since alternative resources are scarce out here. So how does the West ensure that the free aid keeps coming? By systematically destabilizing the wealthiest African nations and their systems, and all that backed by huge PR campaigns leaving the entire world under the impression that Africa is poor and dying and merely surviving on the mercy of the West. Well done, Oxfam, UNICEF, Red Cross, Life Aid, and all the other organizations that continuously run multi-million dollar advertisement campaigns depicting charity porn to sustain that image of Africa globally. Ad campaigns paid for by innocent people under the impression to help with their donations. While one hand gives under the flashing lights of cameras, the other takes in the shadows. We all know the dollar is worthless, while the euro is merely charged with German intellect and technology, and maybe some Italian pasta. How can one expect donations from nations that have so little? 
It's super sweet of you to come with your colored paper in exchange for our golden diamonds. But instead, you should come empty-handed, filled with integrity and honor. We want to share with you our wealth and invite you to share with us. The perception is that a healthy and striving Africa would not disperse its resources as freely and cheaply, which is logical. Of course, it would instead sell its resources at world market prices, which in turn would destabilize and weaken Western economies established on the post-colonial free meal system.